Let's talk about beta blockers. Beta blockers are preparations which binds to beta adrenal receptors and prevent their stimulation by norepinephrine. Right. So I'm going to give you a list of some of the uh, drugs which are beta blockers in alphabetical order. All right. They include esbutolol, atenolol, bitaxolol, bisoprolol, cavedilol, esmolol, labetalol, metoprolol, nadolol, nebivolol, pindolol, propanolol, timolol. Right, so as you can see, these drugs, they end with a uh, suffix olo, olo, right. So uh, in this video, we're going to talk about our nine main indications, again in alphabetical order. Nine indications, uh, action, that's mechanism of action and examples in some of the indications. We'll also talk about selectivity, right? Because we have uh, different beta receptors like beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3, right? There are some drugs which are non-selective. They can they act on all of them and other drugs which uh, act more on other receptors like um, some drugs which have more beta 1 activity than its effect on beta 3. Right. Okay. Uh, and we will conclude with the side effects. Right. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's begin. The first indication is angina pectoris. Right. So uh, beta blockers will block the sympathetic stimulation of the heart that will decrease heart rate, blood pressure, contractility, thereby decreasing cardiac work, thus decreasing the myocardial oxygen consumption. Uh, beta blockers have been known to reduce the frequency of coronary events. Right, so beta blockers, number one, angina pectoris. Next indication is glaucoma. Right, in glaucoma, what is the problem? The problem is high intraocular pressure. Right, so beta blockers decreases aqueous humor production, and an example of a drug that we can use in glaucoma is timolol. Next indication heart failure. Right, so in heart failure, beta blockers they cause a blockade of neurohormonal stress, which will prevent cardiac remodeling and decrease. Mortality. Drugs which are mainly used in uh, heart failure are bisoprolol, cavedilol, metoprolol. Right, so there is a mnemonic, right? Uh, beta blockers curb mortality. Bisoprolol, cavedilol, metoprolol. Next, uh, hypertension. Right, in hypertension, uh, beta blockers firstly decrease cardiac output. Uh, they also decrease renin secretion, right? If you remember renin, renin is produced by juxtaglomerular cells, right, in the kidney in case of decreased perfusion. That, uh, and this renin uh, is responsible for converting uh, angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. And then angiotensin 1 will be converted to angiotensin 2 by uh, S, Right, angiotensin converting enzyme and angiotensin 2 has a plethora of effects in different organs and the main aim is to increase what uh, blood pressure right so if we uh, block renin secretion in this case we decrease blood pressure that's the mechanism in hypertension next hyperthyroidism or thyroid storm Right. Uh, we use uh, beta blockers as a uh, symptom control. Right. We we'll decrease heart rate and reduce tremors. Right. Remember, uh, thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones. They increase uh, sensitivity of beta receptors to catecholamines. That's their mechanism. The uh, thyroid hormones. Right. So if we uh, use beta blockers like propanolol, we reduce the symptoms next hypertrophic cardiomyopathy right so uh this is in most cases is an autosomal dominant trait right and in this case the 
uh, the interventricular septum will uh, will bulge into the left ventricle, thus reducing uh, the the cavity, thus the reducing the volume of the left ventricle. Right. So there will be diastolic dysfunction and uh, dynamic obstruction. Right. So in this case, beta blockers will decrease heart rate. Number one, if we decrease the heart rate, we increase the filling time and relieving obstruction. Next, uh, myocardial infarction, MI. Right. So in this case, uh, beta blockers will decrease oxygen demand, that's short-term effect, and uh, long-term effect is uh, reducing mortality. Supraventricular tachycardia. Beta blockers will decrease AV conduction velocity, right? So uh, they are class 2 antiarrhythmics. And examples, uh, metoprolol, esmolol. Uh, variceal bleeding, like the varices, um, in case of, uh, for example, cotal hypertension, uh, beta blockers decreases hepatic venous pressure gradient and portal hypertension, right, is prophylaxis. And uh, I need you to remember this drug, Nadolo, Nadolo. You need to remember it in uh, portal hypertension prophylactic use. Other drugs which we can use in pharisial bleeding include uh, propanolol and cavedilol. So that's the uh, mechanism of action and examples and the indications, right? Okay, now let's talk about uh, selectivity. Beta-1 selective antagonists. This means uh, these drugs have more beta-1 selectivity than beta-2, right? Uh, examples include esbutolol. All right, esbutolol is uh, is considered a partial agonist. Uh, it's called a partial agonist due to its intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. Right, so it's cardioselective. Esbutolol, atenolol, betaxolol, bisoprolol, esmolol, metoprolol. All right. To remember this, you need to know that. Selective antagonists mostly go from A to M, that's beta 1 with first half of the alphabet. Non-selective antagonists, it means beta 1, same as beta 2. Examples include uh, nadolol, pendolol, uh, pendolol is a partial agonist, uh, propanolol, timolol. To remember this, Non-selective, just remember it is non-selective, non-selective from N to Z, right? So non-selective antagonists mostly go from N to Z, right? So beta 2 with second half uh, of the alphabet. Non-selective alpha and beta antagonists, right? Now we are no longer talking about only beta but also alpha, right? So these include um, Cavedilo and la beta low right so non-selective alpha and beta antagonist have a modified suffix you say instead of allo you see elo or allo right because i told you uh, the general suffix in beta blockers is allo yeah you can remember it that way then there is nebivalo nebivalo combines Cardiac selective beta 1 adrenergic blockade with stimulation of beta 3 receptors, right? So this will activate uh, nitrous oxide synthase in the vasculature and decrease the systemic uh, vascular resistance. So you need to remember this ability of nebivalo to increase uh, nitrous oxide for vasodilation right? and decreasing the what? Uh, systemic vascular resistance right uh, let's look at the side effects of beta blockers all right so these are some of the side effects erectile dysfunction uh, in cardiovascular system there will be a bradycardia av block even heart failure central nervous system there will be seizures uh, sleep alterations dyslipidemia 
in case of metoprolol, right? Metoprolol can cause uh, dyslipidemia. Mask the hypoglycemia. How does this happen? Beta blockers can mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia, such as rapid heartbeat and tremor, because they block the effects of norepinephrine, uh, which results in slowing of your heart rate and uh, reduced tremor, right? So beta blockers, they can mask, it's called uh, hypoglycemia and awareness you won't get these symptoms you won't be aware that there is hypoglycemia right and also uh the beta blockers non-selective ones can cause um asthma or copd exacerbations right so you need to know the antidote in case of uh um this beta blockers you need to know how to uh, reverse the effects so remember glucagon atropine and fluids right so to conclude this video let's just review the indications and side effects right so um the indications include uh migraine right so we use uh propanolol for prophylaxis right glaucoma hyperthyroidism chronic heart failure coronary heart diseases and uh, tachyarrhythmias, right? Because its activity on beta-1 will decrease the uh, force of contraction and heart rate. Essential hypertension, right? This will re uh, reduce renin, right? Because I told you the JG cells have beta-1 receptors, right? So it reduces renin and reduces the sympathetic activity. And also in tremors, we can use the beta blockers. Unwanted effects, headache, depression, uh, bronchoconstriction in the heart, bradycardia, AV block, hypotension, hypoglycemia, right? Hypoglycemia and awareness and impotence. That's uh, erectile dysfunction. Thank you so much. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure you hit the thumbs up and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe. Peace out.